if I operated uh, out of fear over a motion to vacate, I would never be able to do my job. I, look, history judges us for what we do. This is a critical time right now, a critical time on the world stage. I, I could make a, you know, I, I could make a selfish decision and 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 do something that um, th th that's different. But I, I'm doing here what I believe to be the right thing. Um, I think pr providing lethal aid to Ukraine right now is critically important. I really do. I, to put it bluntly, I would rather send bullets uh, to Ukraine than American boys. A vote on this will likely come Saturday evening. Congress is trying to push this through ahead of next week's recess. President Biden has indicated if those three foreign aid bills come across his desk, he will sign it. Bianca. Kelly Ducard, thank you for that update from Capitol Hill. Let's bring in our panel to discuss what comes next. Republican strategist Cheryl Adams with us today and the executive director of the American conservative Kurt Mills. Welcome in, panel. Great to have you. Hi, guys. So Thanks. let's talk about Speaker Johnson. Obviously, there's a lot of pressure on him. Uh, he's getting this, you know, pressure from House Freedom Caucus. There is a potential motion to vacate. We saw Thomas Massey said he'll support it with MTG. So in a strange way, it may be Democrats who, if that was to be triggered, come in and, and, and help him. Uh, they're not signaling that they will. But all of this infighting, while there are wars being waged and, and people's innocent lives being, you know, destroyed every single day. Um, how do you feel Speaker Johnson is handling the situation today and putting this forth, as he says, because he feels it's the right thing to do? Cheryl, to you first. Hi, I saw that data today. I saw that poll and it does look like voters are in favor of aid to Ukraine. And even in the swing states and the likely to vote red states, they are overwhelmingly favoring support to Ukraine. I think they'd like us to get more creative now that um, I'm seeing that they'd like uh, Russian assets to be used. I think there's some creative thinking and planning that needs to be considered here, mm -hmm. but we cannot lose sight of our border. I live in Southern California, and it is of utmost importance that the messaging comes out that we're going to be hitting that um, problem next. But I do think overwhelmingly so support to Ukraine is still in play. And Kurt, I know that there will be discussions about making it, you know, alone. Um, and they, you know, more oversight. There are amendments that can be debated. We have 72 hours. Uh, does this pass? And if it does pass, does Speaker Mike Johnson then have to face a motion to vacate? Yeah, I, I respectfully disagree. I don't think there's overwhelming support among Republicans for Ukraine. I think the trajectory here is very clear, which is more and more skepticism on the Republican right, both in the membership in the House and in actual voters in this country towards continuation of this war uh, that cannot be won on the Ukrainian side. Um, I think, accordingly, Johnson has thrown in with the wrong side on the issue. I understand he thinks he's he's doing the right thing, uh, but if you saw it, the way his comments today, he uses phrases like "axis of evil." Uh, these are just you know completely tired Bush, uh, you know George W. Bush administration talking points. I don't think he gets where the party is moving, and I think this is a moment for leadership in the party, uh, i.e., you know, for President Trump, who has has urged today uh, against this bill and has mm -hmm. questioned why Europe, uh, if this is a European security issue, uh, isn't moving. Uh, I believe his actual quote was, uh, "Get Europe moving." Or or something I think that that's effect. a singular way of looking at things. Excuse me Go for ahead, interrupting, Charles. but I, I do feel that people see, I watched the numbers, I saw the polls, I've looked at everything I could before this call, and people believe Putin is a danger. So they're looking at that point, and the speaker is putting his neck on the line, and it's his decision to do this. I think we need to unite as a party and stop the infighting. And I well, I believe that the president, the, uh, Donald Trump, is behind the speaker as well. The, he, I mean, he, he did stand next to Trump at Mar-a-Lago, and the polls did, I know the ones you're referring to as of today, but it is it is valid that if it does go through that they, he could still face a motion to vacate. Okay. And, and to this point of infighting here, the problem I have with all of this is you know, no one wants the speaker job in a way. I mean, look at how the torture we went through after it was, uh, you know, McCarthy and then here. So if they are going to put trigger this, um, no one's really coming up with a real solution of who would be better. There's so no I think that's the problem. Here. We're living in the moment too much. And there's too many cooks in the kitchen, if you will. The speaker okay. has the title speaker. We Let's have like to respond oh, to that, that. Yeah, Kurt, yeah. respond to what Charles yeah. saying. That there's too many, too many voices in what's going on here, and uh, too much on the line here. 
Yeah, the speaker, of course, is his decision, um, but there are consequences for his decision. And, and the, the understanding uh, when Mr. McCarthy was placed in the autumn uh, was to uh, make motions towards conservative prerogatives. And this is the most important one. This is war and peace. This is uh, this is the opportunity for Johnson to show that he's different from McCarthy and he's not showing it at all. And I think it is a motion to vacate if this goes through like this is justified. Well, it would cause uh, more chaos, though, and pull people, uh, yeah. give the Democrats a, a weapon, okay. though, before the, uh, well, you know, less like, unification. Um, this is punitive. It's like, oh, you will be punished. It's not the way we should be running our country where it's a tit for tat thing. We need to look at the long game. We need to have a plan beyond today. And I think the speaker is stuck in a very tough situation, and I hope he wins, and I it, hope we get through this. And it get is going to be tough. The next few days are going to be very fascinating to watch it play out as we have before. I really appreciate mm -hmm. both of your comments, uh, the analysis of this, thank and um, uh, thank you so much, Kurt and Charles. I appreciate you both. Great. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, guys. We'll be right back with much more uh, protests on the campaign trail with Biden in Philadelphia. It's next.